Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're gonna to continue working on the Lego City. Yesterday I started working on the cove by the lighthouse and old fishing store. I think that looks pretty cool. I started working on the water here as well so I can lay some more of those plates. And also Simon's here today as well, so he has been uh, building plates as well, specifically the deep blue sea ones. We now have four done, and he's working on plate number five and six right up against the lighthouse there. And I'm probably gonna fill this water in with some more black and blue plate. There we go, that's seven base plates done. Not quite 100% done yet, actually. There's some small gaps that are one by one stud, one by two stud, and one by three. I've got an order that's on its way, and when that order arrives, I'll be able to finish these off. There's some of the smaller elements, like the one by ones and one by twos and blue and dark blue. But I don't know, I think that's pretty good. We got seven base plates done, assembly line style, run pretty smoothly. And here they are placed underneath the Flamingo Floaty or the Flamoti from the Friends Party Boat. Now I can actually start to visualize what this water is gonna look like. Definitely worth doing, even though I don't have the tiles. They're on their way, I just tracked it. Oh, they're not gonna be here till like mid to end of July. Ah, that's the problem with ordering from Bricklink. They take forever to get here. Maybe I was better off ordering them from Lego, but they were, nine cents rather than six cents. So decided to order them from Bricklink, but maybe I shouldn't have done that because now I've got to look at the water like this for a couple weeks at the least. Look at the difference though, when you have the tiles placed on top of the plates. Like this plate work here is pretty much the same as this plate work. Look at the difference, it looks beauty. I've got all these tiles lined up single file, but I'll definitely have to try and change it up a bit to give this a little bit more texture, add some more waves and get these going in different directions. But I'm really excited about tiling off this cove in uh, two or three weeks. <laughs> and then look at this, all the water is done here in the front plates up to the lighthouse. So the deep blue sea is getting there. I ordered some one by four tiles off Bricklink and Stings Bricks delivered them, but like we're gonna run out <laughs> so quickly. It's unfortunate because they actually had these one by four dark bluish, dark bluish gray, I'm so used to saying that, dark trans blue tiles on the uh, pick and build wall not too long ago, and I didn't buy very many of them because I knew I was using the light blue ones. Hopefully when I check out the pick and build wall on a restock day in the near future, they'll have, in the near future, they'll have some more so I'm able to get those and continue the tiling here in the deep sea area, or I've just got to place another brick link ordered. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous, but man, totally, totally worth it. That is awesome. Glad we got the water done. So I'm gonna continue working on the city, but I've got to do a task here that's gonna seem pretty funny. All of these part bins, these tables, everything underneath the tables, they've all got to move. Like this entire row of stuff has got to move. And that's because we're actually getting some new film put on the windows, which is gonna be 100% UV protection. So we're no longer gonna be using the core blast. It's gonna be a nice professionally installed film. And I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> but in order to install that, all this stuff has gotta move. There we go, everything's out of the way. We can access the windows now. I'm excited to see these new window treatments. It's gonna be much better than the core blast. Maybe we should just keep the studio like this though. Look at that, we got all the parts in a row here. We got a nice workspace. <laughs> Tables flipped over like Thor was here or something. And uh, while we wait for him to arrive, we're actually repairing this old school boat. It's called the Launch and Load Seaport. Couldn't find the instructions on lego.com, but that's what it looks like there. And we found the instructions on this website. And that's the actual boat portion right there. And here it is. So I'm pretty excited about getting these windows treated properly. It's gonna block the UV light, which is so important. And it's still gonna let the natural light in. It's gonna be way better than this plastic. That's a good spot for the TV, hey? <laughs> Just right up against the window. Not ideal. But in addition to uh, the windows upstairs, of course, he's gonna be putting uh, the, what do you want to call it? Laminate? I don't know. Laminate, I guess, <laughs> on the windows down here as well. And it's going to block the UV light, which is great because I got white Lego sets in here. 
and just blocking the UV light in general is a good thing. Plus I still want the light to come through. So I'm excited to see the end result of that. And uh, it's also like this really thick security stuff too, which is smash proof. So that's good too, I think. Makes me sleep at night. Here we go, look at this classic. Isn't that cool? Classic cargo ship. Hey, you know who gave me this? It was actually Sting's Bricks way back in the day. He gave me that. Pretty cool, came with the overhead crane too. Just looks really cool here in the uh, shipping yard or the boat yard or harbor, whatever you want to call it. So I'm trying to think of what we can do next year in the Lego city. And I sort of feel like I'm at a little bit of a standstill right now because I'm waiting on orders to arrive. Specifically like two by two brick. I have 400 of them upstairs, but they're like tan, dark gray, light gray, black, the ones that I don't really want to use. And it's like, yeah, I could continue building mills plates with all of those, but then when my bricklink orders arrive, I'll be like, ah, oh, why did I use all those valuable colors underneath like the underlying plate? Why would I do that? That doesn't really make any sense. I may as well wait until my orders arrive so that I can continue doing stuff. I know I have like a bunch of two by fours up there and a bunch of two by threes. Once again, it doesn't really make sense to use two by fours and two by threes underneath four by four plate because it just straight up doesn't. It costs more money and it just, it just economically does not make sense. And then so yeah, I wanna continue working on the water but gotta wait for my tiles to arrive. <laughs> so. It's no one's fault but my own, truly, because I just didn't order the stuff in a timely fashion, I guess. But there is uh, one circumstance that sort of made me or forced me to delay those orders. And it's a circumstance that I can't really mention. It has to do with like the, the big 100,000 piece order that I uh, will be getting in the fall. That's sort of it. So it's like this mental roadblock that I'm like, okay, I know I'm gonna be getting 100,000 pieces in the fall. That's gonna have all the parts, but I've got to place more orders right now to get by until then. So that's sort of like the, uh, the holdup at the moment. So I was um, thinking to myself, what can I do? to continue working on this, this place. And the reality is, is what I could start doing is locking down the grid of the Lego city on the um, countryside here. Because I've got a bunch of 15 by 15 inch base plates upstairs. That's like the 48 by 48 light gray ones. So I'm actually starting to remove all of the medieval stuff because I've got a plan. So I've been mentioning for a while that I plan to expand the city and the expansion is gonna go right there. And somebody in the comment section mentioned that, hey, what you should do is make this an island. That was always the plan. I was gonna put the mansion on there or, or something. But he said, what you should do is make it an island surrounded by water and have it as your giant medieval scene. That will free up a bunch of space in the Lego city for the countryside and it'll uh, just like group all the castles together. So I was like, oh man, that's a really good idea. So in order to lock down the grid for the Lego city, I need to remove all the castles and put them on this island. Otherwise, there's no point in, you know, working these into the layout if they're potentially going to go onto this island over here. So I decided to grab some sheets of melamine and lay out what this floating island is potentially going to look like. So this is a seven base plate wide island and it's 19 base plates long. I do it seven base plates because I can reach that far. And it's probably going to be actually a little bit shorter than the Lego city tables. So I'll make the legs a little bit shorter just so it's a little bit lower down and then you can get like a really cool perspective of it going up. So I'll probably do that and then there'll be all sorts of terrain and and all that as well, like a different elevation, sort of like what I've done with a lot of my castle plates. They're all elevated up off the base plate like that. 
But I'm thinking this is gonna work because it's 19 base plates by seven base plates. What's the math on that? I don't know, quite a few. <laughs> and it's actually gonna be the same distance away from the wall on this side as the Lego City. So that is 40.5 inches away from the wall. And then over here, I think it's like 43 inches away from the wall. So that is gonna work. I just laid this wood out and I think this is what the island is gonna look like. There's a bunch of space here. I don't wanna bring it too, uh, like too much this way because my staircase is right here. So I wanna make sure there's good access right there. There's still gonna be all this space that's open, like the tiled area, but I wanna leave this open as well. So I think that's sort of what the island is gonna look like. Yeah, I think this is gonna be super cool. That's all my medieval stuff. So we got the Lion Knight's Castle on its custom plate the medieval jousting on its custom plate with the custom bleachers and concession area there. Then we have the blacksmith along with the little horse stable right there and the big plate and then the medieval scene over here. So there's the uh, huge customized castle that I built with all the creator three in one castles and then this tavern and this custom wizard's tower over here along with this uh, castle here that I built using two sets and then I built the castle walls for it and raised it up. So I've got a bunch of space for expansion here as well. And we could do like water around the entire perimeter. It'd be pretty cool. And then I've got the uh, Viking set, which might look pretty cool there, along with the Viking ship. And then I've got a couple more uh, medieval blacksmiths sealed upstairs and I could use those to build some rebrickable models or just as parts packs to build other things. And I could definitely get some rolling landscape here, just like you see with some of the other uh, plates. And I was thinking to myself, rather than using a wood frame and table legs, what I could do is use the same cabinets, like the best of TV cabinets that I have my UCS sets on in the shelving room. And I could put those underneath and then it's not gonna raise this up too high because once you put table legs on it, and then you start building up, it might take away from the Lego city because I don't want it to be taller than the city. So having it at the diorama table height might really work out. So now that I've got all that stuff off the uh, Lego city tables, I'm just gonna grab all these base plates here. Well, I already grabbed them, but I'm gonna unpack them all because that's quite a few of them. And I'm gonna start laying them out here to try and build the grid on this white table. In regards to the countryside, included in that is the campground. I decided it's time to get rid of all of the vegetation. Well, maybe not all of it, but a lot of the bigger trees and bushes and everything that just gets in the way because I've got to reshuffle all of these plates and this stuff just gets in the way. The amount of times that I've knocked over trees or bushes or saplings or minifigures is just absurd. So it's time for this stuff to get out of the way because this entire area is going to need a substantial rebuild. After removing all those trees and much more, here's all my uh, vegetation bins. So you got this giant bin full of trees right there. Another giant bin. Another medium sized bin and another medium sized bin. <laughs> so there's quite a bit and this isn't all of it. Believe me, there's more upstairs and more in the city as well. In addition to deforestation, I also uh, did a bunch of other stuff in the Lego city as well. And I was uh, looking for this. I was wondering where it went. Yeah, I guess I left it right here. <laughs> mm. Check out the windows though. Way better, hey? That's clean. So it's uh, a window film. I was calling it a laminate earlier. I guess it's sort of a laminate, a film, but it uh, blocks the UV light. It uh, prevents glass break, like you can't break the glass, you can't break through it. And uh, they actually like took the door apart so it goes underneath the frame and everything. So they did a really good job. And I've been looking for uh, a solution for the, the window coverings in general for, for a while. I was using that, that uh, what was it called? Coreplast or something like that. And the issue is with that stuff is, well, it's like a piece of plastic that's up against the glass. So that expands and contracts with the, the heat. Therefore, the, the tape that was holding it in place actually had Velcro, like heavy duty Velcro that was holding it in place. The tape was expanding and contracting as well. So it kept like falling off, which isn't good because 
I don't want that stuff to fall off. And it was like triggering motion detectors and stuff like that. It was just a huge pain. Also, I was a little bit worried about having this piece of plastic up against the window and window frame because that will trap moisture in there and that can cause mold and mildew and just not good at all. So this is definitely a much better solution. And it looks cleaner and a lot more presentable. It doesn't block the sunlight 100%. That's good because I don't want to be a vampire, but it does sort of mess with the camera a little bit, but I think I would rather have sunlight in here than it'd be just perfect for the camera. I just, I spent so much time in here and to not have any sunlight in here just doesn't really make any sense. I've got to like reassemble all this. The problem is, is it's already four o'clock and my uh, babysitter wants to go home. That's my mom. Thank you, mom. <laughs> she needs to be there at all times because Jose, once again, has half a hand. But let's check out what uh, I did in the Lego city while they were installing that stuff before I head out. So it's a day of water work and also planning for the future. Once again, we've got this massive table that I'm gonna build here for the medieval area. I think this is gonna be awesome. So these are the uh, cabinets that I was talking about. I wanna make it like the diorama cabinet. So it's gonna be at that height, which is way shorter than the Lego city. And I think that actually makes sense because it's not gonna block the Lego city. Also, you're gonna be able to look down at this diorama which is a super cool concept. And uh, these dioramas are gonna be mountainous or have terrain. So I think having it lower down makes sense so you can actually look at this stuff. And it's not gonna take away from the city. That would suck if it was at the same height and I had this medieval stuff blocking the view of the city, not so good. But if it's more so in the foreground, I think that's really gonna work out. So I've gotta to go to Ikea and get some of those cabinets. And then I just got to cut this melamine to the right size and put it over top. I just have to measure this space and uh, look at the IKEA website and make sure I actually ordered the right product that's the right height. Okay, so check it out. This water, as we saw earlier, up to the lighthouse is all done. But then also all the underlying plate besides the small stuff right here is all done as well. So now all I need to do is lay the trans bl dark blue one by four tiles and one by one cheese slopes. I also have to do these inlets. This one's done here, but I have to plate these inlets as well. And I didn't want to plate these inlets yet because these might change. Like the width of these might change because when I built the cove the other day, I allocated more space to the actual harbor. So these inlets might change by, by a stud or two. So I don't want to lay all this plate and then have to redo it all. I was thinking because I have all this space here now, this is gonna be a great spot for a boat launch. Might be a bit awkward with that train track there, but I think this is the best spot for a public boat launch that can be used by people like this guy's dogs taking a nap. So I think that's gonna be the best spot for the boat launch. It makes sense to have it there. And it's a cool concept because this is all water here on the front and this is gonna be an island and I wanna do water around the entire thing. Probably 16 studs at most and maybe there'll be a larger cove that I can park the, the Viking boat and maybe like a pirate ship or something in this diorama down here. I think that'd be super cool. A lot of terrain, a lot of landscaping. It's gonna be incredible. So I was thinking that, oh man, what I should do is I should continue working on this area. But the issue is, I know like I sound like a broken record here, but it's parts. So for example, I was like, okay, what we should do is we should fence off this area and we should build some sea cans. And then I, I start to look into how to build sea cans. You could do it with tiles and plates and brackets. You can do them with these modified rail plates. You can do them with all sorts of different things. And then I look at my parts inventory and I say, okay, I don't have enough parts to build five or six sea cans. I have a lot of parts, yes, but I don't have those exact parts. So in order to build the sea cans, I need to order parts. And then it's like, okay, well maybe we can build the fence. I start looking into my fence drawers and ladders and stuff like that. I'm like, that's so boring. I don't wanna use ladders and fence pieces from the pad wall, I'm not doing that. What I would like to do is use like snot bricks and then put like a clip on it and actually put flex tubing all the way along. And then put, you know, a snot brick and a little clip and flex tubing all the way along or a small bracket 
that's one by two tall and put the uh, modified one by ones with the forward facing clip on there and then put flex tubing. So you can sort of bend this fence and it looks sort of industrial. But then it's like, okay, well, I don't have unlimited amounts of those snot bricks in a consistent color or the clips or the flex tubing. So in order to do that, I need to order certain pieces. So my theory is right now is, is, is sort of the same as what I've always been saying uh, since I started this Lego City layout. What I need to do is work on getting the actual base structure of everything done. For example, I got the um, downtown core. The base structure of that is done. And I'm gonna move on from that. And now I've got the beach and the water. The base structure of that is done. And now I'm working on the harbor. The base structure of that is now done. So I'm gonna move on to the next. And the next thing I'm gonna work on is probably the countryside. That's why I removed all of those trees. Because in order to get the base structure for this area done, I have got to blow up a lot of stuff. For example, this Ninjago Mountain right back here. I am going to destroy that. That is going to get destroyed and parted out because in that is a lot of two by two bricks I need, a lot of dark gray slopes that I need, a lot of parts that I need are there. And there's no way that I'm gonna be able to retailer this specific plate that was built for such a weird area in my old layout. It was like up against the raised platform. So it's gotta be blown up and it's gotta be parted out and rebuilt into something different. And that's the same with probably the majority of all of these plates. For example, this has this really cool hill on the back of it. That's gotta be blown up because there's no, there's no back to it or it doesn't extend onto a different plate. The position of it doesn't work. So the entire airstrip has gotta be ripped apart. Santa Claus's mountain, it was built for one of those cabinets and that's why it's so square and it doesn't look like a natural mountain because it was built for something that could only accommodate one of these base plates. So there wasn't a whole lot of space to do anything with it. So that mountain has to be ripped apart. This winter village eventually is gonna be up on a mountain over here with the ski slope and everything. Therefore, this winter village makes no sense. It has to be completely destroyed and ripped apart. The ski slope, once again, was built for a certain, or for, built in a certain dimension for a specific diorama. It has to be destroyed and rebuilt. And when I do this, it's gonna free up a bunch of bricks that are under there, unlimited amounts of two by two bricks, which are under here, because there's stacks of three, and it's gonna free up so many parts so that I can start to, or continue working on the structure of the city in the foreground and work my way back here. So all of this stuff, I am going to be destroying in the very near future. That is my next project. Like when I say very near future, I mean like tomorrow when I get back here. The, I'm gonna be destroying and parting out all of this stuff other than like the structures. Of course, I'll keep the structures <laughs> intact. So then after I went through here and I laid all of those base plates, by the way, all those base plates have been opened up and put into the recycling hoard over here along with the old window coverings and laid and I'm out of them again. So as you can see, I need to get a lot more base plates because there's a lot of white table here, like hundreds of them. So yeah, I gotta get on that. Uh, but then after I uh, worked on this area, I was like, okay, I'm gonna work on the um, amusement park area. And I took out everything that was from the old layout that was specifically built for the old layout. And that's this pile right here. So you've got like some train track plates. We've got some uniquely tiled off stuff. We've got some train track ballast plates. We've got this thing, which was outside of the amusement park. And look what's underneath. Important pieces, I need all this. So all of this stuff has got to be completely ripped apart, taken apart, parted out, and reallocated into other stuff that I can actually use for this layout. Because it was specifically built for a layout that was like four base plates wide. So then after I removed all that stuff, and started placing these rides in a potential layout. I did this within you know, half an hour. I don't know if this is gonna be the actual layout, but you, ne you never know, things will change. But you know, the roller coaster could be over there, the haunted mansion could be right there, the loop coaster, which is really tall, could be there, the other haunted house could be here. 
the carousel there, maybe the Disney castle right there where you can actually walk through it, some mini modular buildings here, a big grand central area right there, maybe with some more modular buildings, the entrance here, the Ferris wheel there. And when I build these mountains, maybe the amusement park can start to get some, some incline. So like after you pass through the Disney castle, it can start to go up and maybe this roller coaster is on like a raised platform and we can start to go up into the mountain range. But I just wanted to get all that stuff out of there because I can reuse all of these parts. So that's all gotta be parted out. And then I can actually start to lay this out and, and start to think what's gonna go down here. Also the train line. So I'm actually gonna pull this, uh, put one base plate of space all the way around the amusement park, sort of like that. And there's gonna be two train lines, one that's going around the entire amusement park and also passing through this train station going there, going under the mountain, popping out behind the, uh, the roller coaster and, and doing a loop around the entire amusement park underneath the mountain. So it's just sort of like a day of thinking and planning and, and building water and trying to determine what I'm gonna do when these parts arrive. And there's so many things that need to be destroyed and the parts need to be reallocated. Even for example, the zoo, I wanna redo the zoo and you can see the aviary there. It has a specific mountain or cliff edge, which was part of a mountain. And you can see it right behind the hospital there. So that needs to be ripped apart and rebuilt as well. So it's taken me a while to, to get to the point where I'm like, okay, it's the end of an era. Everything from the old Lego city layout needs to be ripped apart and rebuilt because this layout is way bigger and the specific builds have got to go. Like they've got to go and they've got to be rebuilt into something better. For example, if I take all the parts from the Ninjago Mountain and also the Mountain View Observatory Mountain, well, then I can start to build my mountain range. So take all three of these mountain ranges, destroy them and start rebuilding the base structure for the new mountain range, which of course is going to start probably in the zoo and work its way up to Ninjago because I wanna have some elevation in the zoo as well. And then I can start reallocating these parts and start to build this mountain range that I've been talking about for so long. But yeah, I think getting the base structure of everything down is more important at this point, even though it's been a couple months since I've started building the Lego city, than adding the actual details to the downtown core and to the train yard and to the boat yard before I start ordering parts for specific little builds and details and, and fences and all of this different stuff, I need to make sure that I allocate my budget to getting the parts here so that I can fill these white tables and I can actually start laying the landscape and laying the plan and laying the framework for everything that's going to come in the future. Just because there's you know, there's, there's a budget involved and there's also a time involved and the fact that I just cannot stand to look at this place like this. Like what's more important to get this figured out or to add a fence here and to add a little bit of hill back here and to add a little bit of hill in there and hill in here and to add some hills and terrain over here. What's more important right now? I would say the more important thing is to start fixing eyesores like that, 110%. Like that has gotta be gone. Like I gotta dedicate my time to that rather than perfecting little areas of the city. I've just gotta get my base structure down. Holy crow, you can sure tell that I've been drinking a very strong coffee after that uh, ramble there. Hey, lots of ideas, lots of plans. Uh, a very uh, bright future, that's for sure. I really do look forward to taking on all the tasks that I just discussed there. Cannot wait. And tomorrow's a new day because tomorrow we're saying goodbye to all of the things that I just talked about there. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you stay tuned for some more great stuff coming out in the near future. And please remember to like, subscribe, and have yourselves a fantastic weekend. Farewell.